Incredibly, the deer manages to break free. But this missed opportunity will not go to waste. The deer may have escaped, but it is badly wounded. Its fate is inevitable. Hi, this is Jay. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more. Enjoy. A young male tiger is on the run. Banished from his home by a wandering male. alone. He must hunt and fight to survive. But a dark shadow creeps over this kingdom. Man's need for resources is overwhelming these lands. Time and space is running out. He must find a territory of his own a mate to continue his legacy. He is known as Kumar and this is his journey. India is home to over 40 tiger reserves and our story begins in the heart of tiger country. The last rains were over four months ago. A hot, dry thirst draws a herd of deer to one of the last remaining pools. They must be cautious. The jungle is home to a powerful predator. beast, rarely seen or heard. Times are tough, especially for this mother. She has cubs to feed. Her son Kumar is eight months old and no longer suckling milk. He needs fresh meat. Kumar has watched his mother hunt since he was only five months old. And one day, he will have to provide for himself. In the meantime, he
He and his sister Mitra can eat like kings. This deer will keep the family content for the next few days. At this age, Kumal and Mitra are totally dependent on their mother for food, while their father relentlessly protects them and his territory against intruders. In a takeover, a new male may kill the cubs to sire his own. For now, the jungle is their playground, and Kumal and Mitra spend their days blissfully unaware of the dangers that lie ahead. As soon as he comes of age, Kumal must leave to find a home and a mate of his own. Like his father before him, he will live a life of solitude. And to survive, the time will come to challenge other males. On the far edges of their father's territory, a wandering male is also on the hunt. A large male tiger, known as Khan, is hot on the trail of a potential meal. This vagrant has fought many battles in the quest to find his own territory and has the scars to prove it. Despite weighing over 400 pounds, he is fast, agile, and deadly. As Khan closes in on his prey, his sense of smell picks up another scent, drifting through the trees. It's the scent of humans. Many villages lie on the edge of the tiger's reserves. This small farming community is home to around 300 people. Like many others, they eke out a living with cattle and crops. Though tigers generally avoid human settlements, for Khan, the temptation of an easy meal is simply too much. Over a thousand cattle and buffalo are lost to tiger attacks each year along the edges of the reserves. And recently, villagers have also fallen victim. An inevitable consequence of the tiger's loss of habitat. These farmers live in fear, but without new land, their families will not survive. As they work the fields, Khan waits patiently, observing. He knows an attack on the livestock now will draw too much attention. He will wait for the cover of darkness. To combat the threat from the tigers, the villagers regularly perform a secret ritual. For centuries, they have had a spiritual pact with the gods. They believe an ancient legend, which tells of a demon that has taken the form of a tiger and developed a taste for human flesh. In the legend, a goddess defends them from this demon. And even today, they still pray for her protection. But judging by recent tiger attacks on the villagers, their prayers are falling on deaf ears. 
the fight for land still rages between Khan and the villagers, yet deep in the heart of the jungle, life thrives. Kumal and Mitra are growing up fast. Under the watchful eye of their mother, they learn to hunt, stalk, and survive. These once playful cubs are now young adults. It's almost time for Kamal and his sister to leave their mother's side and find their own territories. However, until then, he's happy to enjoy the comforts of home. While his sister Mitra practices and hones her skills, Kumal would rather sleep. Yet change is on the horizon. While his sister follows the fresh scent of deer, Kumal wanders aimlessly into the jungle. His presence doesn't go unnoticed. Langurs and tigers have shared this jungle for centuries, but there is no love lost between them. Many a hunt has been ruined thanks to these monkeys' raucous alarm calls, and a tiger wouldn't think twice about killing one of the troop if it got the chance. High up in the trees, the monkeys are safe, yet still they watch Kumal's every move. A sentry raises the alarm. Trouble is coming. But the calls are not for Kumal. There is another tiger approaching. It's the wandering male, Khan. He is here for a takeover. instinctively hides, watching the intruder pass by. This is his father's territory, but he is nowhere to be seen. Kumal isn't ready to take him on, yet there is nowhere to hide. Submits, staying low to the ground. He is lucky to escape with just a scratch. But the message is clear. If he wants to live, he must leave. Mitra can only sit back and watch as her young brother retreats. Kumal disappears into the undergrowth. The jungle can be a lonely place. This once bright and bountiful playground now reveals a darker side. As he wanders further into the unknown, strange shapes and sounds creep in and out of the shadows. 
while inquisitive eyes watch from all around. For all he knows, he could be trespassing in another male's territory, and he has no idea what awaits him at the edges of the jungle. If the villagers find him first, he may be mistaken for Khan and killed on sight. All he can do is find a place to rest and nurse his wounds. He has nothing except the rain. The morning sun is a welcome sight. Its healing warmth lifts Kamal's mood and inspires him to explore. He may not have much, but he does have an empty stomach. To survive out here, Kumar must shake off the mantle of cubhood and become an adult. He must hunt. The jungle is home to a variety of prey, both large and small. From wild pigs and sambar to the herds of spotted deer, His killing instinct is roused as Kumal picks up a familiar scent. He can smell deer. Driven by hunger, he bolts excitedly right into the herd like a fool. With his cover blown, the deer scatter into the forest. The cackles from above don't help. He tries again, this time approaching slowly and silently, just like his mother and sister used to do. It works, and he inches closer and closer. Once again, ruin the hunt. Kumal gives up, leaving the troop to get back to their playful antics. Maybe he should set his sights on something smaller. A mongoose would make a perfect snack. Perhaps he needs to work more on his hiding skills. Day and night, Kumal travels miles through the forest, wandering into the twilight of starvation. Weak and exhausted, Kumal collapses. A startling sound awakes him from his slumber. It's mating season for the peacock. Kumal is about to witness an extravagant display of courtship. Transfixed by this exotic dance, even Kumal can't decide whether to attempt an attack or not. In the end, he leaves the peacocks to get down to business.
The further afield he goes, the more the forest starts to thin out. With fewer trees, the colors begin to fade, and the sounds of the birds and monkeys all but disappear. It's not long before Kumar is on the far edges of the reserve. He settles down, completely unaware the village is just over the ridge. Kumal picks up a sound he has never heard before. Human voices. A group of women are picking berries on the edge of the forest. Intrigued, Kumal wanders a little closer. He lies low, watching and waiting, unsure of what to make of these strange creatures. One of the women turns and spots Kumar. They flee in terror. They've mistaken him for Khan, the tiger that has been terrorizing their village. In his weak and vulnerable condition, he won't stand a chance against a mob of angry villagers. To make it out alive, he must hide. As the villagers spread out, Kamal ducks into the undergrowth. He can hear the shouts and thrashing of sticks getting closer. It is just a matter of time before they find him. But luckily the fading light will work in his favor. The villagers know that it's too dangerous to hunt a tiger at night. If they can't find him, they'll flush him out. The villagers step back and let the fire take over. A wall of flames consumes the field, frozen with fear. Kumal is trapped. As the fire spreads, the heat becomes unbearable. He sees a gap in the flames and runs for his life. Kumal vanishes into the darkness as the fire rages into the night. Kumal is alive, singed, tired, and hungry, but alive. He wakes in a new land, miles from any human settlement. It appears he has stumbled into a little piece of heaven. This territory is prime. It has lots of water and is teeming with life. Even a shy sloth bear comes out for a drink. Kamal waits for him to leave before heading down to the water. The locals give way as he approaches. After his ordeal, the water is a welcome relief. Territories like this are usually taken and dominated by a powerful tiger. Is this paradise too good 
to be true? Is he intruding on another male's territory? For now, he appears to be alone and makes himself at home. However, the serene tranquility is soon broken by Kumal's growling belly. He needs to feed, and this is the perfect place to get his first kill. Wild boar, sambar, and spotted deer spend their days feeding and wading through the cool waters. He carefully selects his target. A herd is right within reach. He can't and won't let this opportunity go. Kumal puts everything into practice and approaches silently. He stays low, moving from cover to cover. Each step is with purpose and poise. Kumal closes in on his prey. There will be more offerings further on. Suddenly, he freezes. There is another tiger. He is not alone after all. She moves with confidence. She's at home. This is Latika, a mature, fertile female. A short spray of urine is how she signals to other females that this territory is taken and when she's ready to mate to the males. Kumar responds by leaving his own mark. When Latika picks up his scent, she covers it with her own. Latika is exceptional, and Kumal is spellbound. He keeps his distance and watches her every move. As she slinks through the forest, Kumal decides to follow. He knows he needs to tread carefully. If he advances too quickly or gives the wrong signal, she will reject him. The longer Kumal follows, the more it appears that Latika is alone. She must share one of the most sought-after pockets of forest in the area. But where is the male that resides over this territory? Perhaps he recently fell victim to the villagers, or even hunters. Letika is all too aware of her stalker. But all young Kamal knows is that he wants her and the land. He 
persists and tries to get as close as he can. She's not happy with his approach. He'll lay claim to this newly opened territory, and she is distrustful of this new male presence. She gives him the slip. As he emerges by the water's edge, his love interest is nowhere to be seen. While he searches for Latika, Kumal fails to notice a dark shadow creeping through the water. This refreshing oasis is home to an ancient predator, a crocodile. The herd of deer Kumal was stalking earlier has also made their way to the water's edge. Both Kumal and the crocodile wait and watch for any stragglers. One deer separates from the herd. The crocodile moves silently into position. manages to break free. But this missed opportunity will not go to waste. The deer may have escaped, but it is badly wounded. Its fate is inevitable, and Kumal doesn't let it out of his sight. The deer doesn't live long. This is a meal delivered to Kamal, courtesy of the crocodile. It may not be how he planned his first kill, but beggars can't be choosers. Each mouthful lifts his energy. Empowered by fresh meat, Kumal heads out to find his mate. Latika is the key to Kamal's future. He has to win her acceptance. After all, she could bear his cubs. He spots her at the water's edge. She seems more relaxed. Maybe this is his chance. He follows her again and picks up a new scent. As he draws air across a sensory organ in the roof of his mouth, he detects a hidden message in the scent. She is in estrus and ready to mate. Kumal gives her the space she needs 
and slowly she allows him closer. Letika is only receptive for three to six days, but Kumal has to be patient, just like the peacocks. This is all part of the tiger's courting ritual. He moves in, but she stops him. He's trying to play his cards just right. The dance continues. She gives subtle signs that she is ready to accept his advances. Kumal has found a place to call home. His journey has been a difficult one. He's been a fugitive in many senses. He has come up against Khan, hunted by the villagers, and survived on his own for the first time. To end up in this Shangri-La, safe and secure for now, with a new mate, 